Well, it seems like when it comes to Samford quarterback Michael Hires, that Michael Hires is for hire. Welcome everybody to JJ9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jerry and I represent the 904 from the 602, and today we are talking about this team behind me right here, the Las Vegas Raiders, and what they might do at the NFL Draft regarding the quarterback position, since the NFL Draft is a month away at this point, taking place in Detroit. The Raiders, obviously, they're going with Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell as their top two guys, but they seem to be in the market for a third quarterback. We talked earlier about how they met with Jordan Travis on a top 30 visit, the Florida State kid. Go check that video out if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the upper right corner and a link in the description down below. And now they have a top 30 visit scheduled with Sanford quarterback Michael Hires from the FCS. This is according to a report from Tristan Kuhn, who says, The Raiders will host Sanford quarterback Michael Hires for a top 30 visit in the coming weeks. Set to meet with nine other teams as well, 30 teams were present to watch his pro day last week. 5.2% big-time throw rate over his career with a 3.2% turnover-worthy play rate. So very efficient quarterback with the Samford Bulldogs. Last season at Samford, 3,056 yards, 18 touchdowns, 8 picks. The year before that, 2022, he was extraordinary when it comes to the numbers. 3,544 yards, 36 touchdowns. Only four interceptions, a touchdown interception ratio that year of 9 to 1, which is just staggeringly high. So, his two year career at Sanford, because he played two seasons at a community college down in Mississippi, 6,600 yards, 54 touchdowns, and 12 picks. Sanford made the playoff in 2022, and Sanford won 17 games over the two seasons that Hires was the starting quarterback for the team. Now, the numbers do look good when you look at it from a far perspective, when you look up close. You look at the games against FBS opponents, wasn't the best. 2022 against Georgia, 2023 against Auburn. More similar to the competition you'll play in the NFL. In those games, he went just 31 for 52, 59% completion, 203 yards, about 100 yards per game, one touchdown, two picks, 58.4 passer rating. For some perspective, the lowest passer rating amongst all qualified quarterbacks in the NFL last year was Bryce Young at 73.7, and hires against FBS schools was 58.4. And that's why his stock isn't necessarily the greatest, but it seems like a lot of teams are interested in his services and the Raiders are lined up with a top 30 visit. Now again, top 30 visit, it is a bit of a misnomer. It is not mean that the Raiders have him as one of the top 30 prospects on the board. All it means is that the Raiders have a private meeting with Michael Hires. They're allowed 30 of those meetings with non-local players. So a player that goes to UNLV doesn't count toward this. But if they want to meet with a player individually one-on-one -on -one at the team facility, that is a top 30 visit. And they already used one on Jordan Travis, and now they're using one on Michael Hire. So two of these visits coming at the quarterback position where it looks like they are in the market for a QB3, since QB3 right now is Anthony Brown, and he is on a reserve futures contract, and the GM Telesco doesn't really have any ties to Anthony Brown whatsoever. Now, here's the interesting thing with Tom Telesco, the GM of the Raiders. Obviously... We don't have an idea of how Antonio Pierce, as the head coach, constructs his roster. We obviously don't know anything about what Telesco is going to do with the Raiders, since it's his first season there. But he was the GM of the Chargers in San Diego and Los Angeles for a decade. And he didn't really draft a whole lot of players that didn't go to FBS schools. Remember, Sanford, not an FBS school. They are an FCS school. Tom Telesco likes drafting guys from FBS. Last year, he drafted seven players. All of them were FBS, and only one of them came outside the Power Five, and that was defensive tackle Scott Matlock from Boise State, which is essentially a Power Five school at this point. I know they play in the Mountain West. I know they're not a Power Five, but of the non-Power Fives, they are the strongest, or one of the strongest at least, on a year-to-year -year basis. 2022, he drafted eight players with the Chargers, all of them FBS, all of them Power Five schools. 2021, nine players drafted, all of them FBS, all of them Power Five. 2020, six players drafted, all FBS, all Power 5. So in the last four years, Telesco has made 30 draft picks with the Chargers. He's drafted 30 guys from FBS, 100%, and 29 Power 5 players, with the lone exception being a Boise State guy. So history is not on a higher side in that regard in terms of the Raiders potentially drafting, and even though they have this top 30 visit. 
Telesco, GM of the Chargers from 2013 to 2023 before he got canned last year. He only has drafted five players from not FBS schools. 76 draft picks made, only five of them not from FBS. So just 6.5% of picks at the FCS level or lower. In 2013, you had Southern Utah quarterback Brad Sorensen. 2015, North Dakota State linebacker Kyle Emanuel. 2019, North Dakota State quarterback Easton Stick. 2019, Sioux Falls tackle Trey Pipkins. And 2019, Delaware safety Nasir Adderley. So three of those guys came in 2019, oddly enough. But the interesting thing when we look at that, only five non-FBS players out of 76 picks, but of those five, two of them, Brad Sorensen and Easton Stick, were at the quarterback position. So all this is to say, Tom Telesco doesn't like drafting guys from FCS schools if his history with the Chargers is anything to go off of, but if he is going to draft a guy, there is a good chance it could be a quarterback. And here's the thing with the Raiders. Tom Telesco, as the GM likes to keep three quarterbacks on the 53-man roster. In five of the last six seasons with the Chargers, he has kept three quarterbacks on the initial 53. 2023, he kept Justin Herbert as QB1, Easton Stick as QB2. They drafted Max Duggan in round seven out of TCU. They were expecting him to be QB3. He had a disappointing preseason, so he just made it on the practice squad. But the intention there was for him to be QB3 and make the roster. 2022, they kept three quarterbacks on the 53 to start off. Herbert, Chase Daniel, Easton Stick. 2021, again, they kept three quarterbacks on the 53. Herbert, Stick, and Tyrod Taylor. 2020, same thing. Herbert, Stick, and Taylor. 2019, Phillip Rivers. You had Tyrod Taylor and you had Easton Stick. And then 2018, you had Phillip Rivers as the one, Geno Smith, and Cardell Jones. So, based on his history, you think that Tom Telesco is keeping three QBs on the roster. The current QBs are Gardner Minshew and Eden O'Connell. Anthony Brown, I don't think he's going to make the roster. He's got that reserve futures contract. But right now, he's QB3, and based on the visit with Jordan Travis, based on this visit, it looks like they're going to try and upgrade at QB3 and try to get a younger person in there that has direct ties to this regime. Again, most places don't have hires getting drafted. I looked at a ton of mock drafts. The highest I've seen is round seven, so this is not a guy that's going to go early on. It's not a guy that's going to go day two, not a guy that's going to hear his name called very early in day three. He would likely be a high-priority undrafted free agent, or a round seven draft pick by the Raiders. Now, the Jets are interested in Jordan Travis. The Jets are the other team that has scheduled a top 30 visit with him. The Raiders are interested in him. So, if you miss out on Travis, you could go with hires. The Raiders have two seventh rounders. So, at that point, you're just taking guys that you like, that you fear could sign elsewhere as undrafted free agents. So, hires won't sign with the Raiders as an undrafted free agent if he has a bad chance of making the roster, which, again, I don't think he would because he's going to be competing with Anthony Brown for that number three QB spot, or if there are other teams in the running for a QB three. So if the Raiders are the only team to give him a top 30 visit, that is good. The Raiders might take their chance and be like, you know what? We're really interested in this guy. We've shown interest with his camp. He might come with us. If other teams give him top 30 visits, then what that might say to the Raiders is, wait a sec, there could be interest in this guy around the league. Let's use one of our two seventh round picks on this guy so he can't go somewhere else as an undrafted free agent and we have control. Because here's the thing, there could be other teams that could be interested in hires. He hasn't met with them yet, but look at a team like the San Francisco 49ers. They need a QB3. They have no one outside of Brock Purdy and Josh Dobbs. That's a different story. Look at the Detroit Lions. There are three quarterbacks right now, Jared Goff, Hooker, and then Nate Sudfeld, who is absolute garbage. Sudfeld's currently QB3. That's a different story. Maybe the Rams swoop in. They need a QB3, even a QB2, because Garoppolo is going to be suspended for the first two games, and we don't know what's happening with Stetson Bennett, and the other quarterback on the roster is Dresser Wynn. A team like the Bengals, they only have two quarterbacks on the roster with Joe Burrow and Jake Browning, and obviously Burrow won't play a lot of the preseason if he plays at all, so Hires can get a lot of good reps in Cincinnati as an undirected free agent, so that's a different story. So if the Raiders are interested in him, they'll have to gauge what the other teams are doing in terms of top 30 visits, where Hires goes, and based on that report by Kuhn earlier, it seems like there are some teams that are interested in him. 30 teams were at Samford's Pro Day, presumably to watch Hires in some capacity. Whether they draft him, again, is going to depend on how much other teams show interest, and the Raiders have two seventh-rounders to work with. Be a different story if they didn't have a seventh-round pick, if they only had a sixth-round pick, but two seventh-rounders, you can use one of them on your QB3 if you feel that is necessary. If another team schedules a top 30 visit with him, you might pull the trigger if they can't get Jordan Travis, if the Jets take him, if they decide to pass on Travis because it might go too high in the draft. 
And if not, you might just roll the dice as an undrafted free agent. Either way, what we do know is that the Las Vegas Raiders have some interest in the Sanford quarterback, Michael Hires. He will be a hot name toward the end of the draft. It's around round six, round seven, undrafted free agent, high priority undrafted free agent. We will have to wait and see where he goes and what team acquires him, what team gets the very good FCS scoreback over the last two seasons. But what are your thoughts on Michael Hires? What are your thoughts on the Raiders, what they're going to do with the draft? Do you think they get that third quarterback? And if so, do you think they draft him or do you think they wait till under it for agency? What are your thoughts on Michael Hires? Do you think he's going to be a good player in the NFL? Where do you think he's going to wind up? What round do you think he's going to get drafted in? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. And that is going to do for this episode of JJ9 News. Be sure you like and subscribe. helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check my main channel, JaroGare9, where we talk all things NFL history all the time. Until next time, this is JaroGare9 signing off. And as always, go Jags.